Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video we're back with another Yaesu VX6 Operator Series video. In the last installment of this series I showed you how to program in simplex uh, frequencies into memory channels, and for this video we're going to be doing the same, except this time we'll be dealing with repeaters. I picked two different types of repeaters that uh, we use here at the club. Um, one is going to involve tone squelch, and one is going to involve just tone. But uh, we will, uh, while some of the procedures will look a lot like those done in the simplex video, uh, this is going to differ in that we're going to be dealing with a receive frequency, a transmit frequency. We're going to be dealing with either one or two uh, CTCSS tones, and then we're going to be dealing with offset. Uh, or, so, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and launch into it. Obviously, the first thing we want to do when we start this process is long press the power key and turn the radio on. Uh, once we get to this point, we're currently in memory mode, so let's refresh and see what we put in here from last time. Channel 1 is call 1, channel 2 is call 2, and then channel 3 is 146415, all simplex channels. There is no channel 4. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start by switching to VFO mode. Now before we do anything, as you recall, I talked about uh, automatic repeater shift last time and how that helps you in programming these radios by automatically um, adding in the appropriate amount of offset, uh, depending on the repeater frequency you're dealing with. Um, now we did turn that off for simplex, but now we're going to want to, since we're dealing with repeaters, we're going to want to turn that back on. So to uh, turn automatic repeater shift back on, we're going to uh, press the FW key and the zero key to get into the set menu. And we're going to be looking for menu item number four, which is automatic repeater shift. Once we get there, we're going to hit the zero key again. And as you can see, it's turned off. We want to now turn that on. And now we're going to hit set to save that. And we're going to hit the PTT to exit. There we are. OK, so we are in VFO mode. So the first repeater I'm going to program in is going to be a VHF repeater. Now this is going to involve tone squelch, uh, which means there is going to be a CTCSS tone applied to uh, both the transmit and receive frequencies. And usually repeaters do break down into two different types. There's either um, a CTCSS tone applied uh, just to the, send, the transmit frequency and nothing on receive. That's the most common that you're going to encounter. But oftentimes, like in the case of this first repeater we're talking about, um, it has a CTCSS tone applied to both the uh, transmit and the receive frequency. The reason being is there's a repeater in an adjacent county that's just far enough away that we pick up a little bit of, uh, little bit of their traffic because they uh, only encode on, on uh, the transmit frequency and not the, uh, not the receive frequency. So if you don't have that set on this repeater, you will hear traffic from that other repeater. It gets a little confusing, so we apply tone to both. Um, so to start off with, we're going to enter in the actual frequency for the repeater, and this is going to be the receive frequency. In this case, it's 1, 4, 6, 8, 8, 0. Now you'll notice right away, because automatic repeater shift uh, is on, that you now see a little minus sign appearing at the top. Um, that's indicating that uh, automatic repeater shift has done its job and it has applied a minus offset. Now in this case, um, and this is something you'll want to double check to make sure they get it right, but in this case the uh, the repeater does in fact call for a minus 0.6 megahertz offset. So uh, that's looking good so far. Now before we save this to memory though, we want to set the other parameters. Uh, because before you save it to memory, you want to set your uh, you want to set your CTCSS tone. You want to make sure the offsets and everything are done. So we're going to go into the set menu at this time. Oh, well, I didn't press the FW key effectively enough. There we go. And we're good to go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to check, we're going to zip through here. And let's see. we got a little, little ways to go here. Now we're looking, first thing I'm going to check is RPT, uh, item number 51. You're not going to make an adjustment here, but I'm just going to verify. Uh, this is a way, uh, an additional way of verifying that an offset has been applied. So I press that and you'll see right here uh, a minus for the repeater has been applied. So that's fine. So we'll back out of that by pressing the zero again. And now we're going to move to squelch type, item number 60. Now here is where you select either, um, and let's go ahead and enter in this, see what we've got. You have either off, 
you have tone, which is going to apply a CTCSS tone to the transmit frequency only. It will not apply anything to the receive frequency. Then you have the TSQL. Now that's your tone squelch. That's going to apply um, the whatever the CTCSS tone you enter in. That's going to apply that to both the transmit and receive frequency. And that is the one we want. So we're going to go ahead and select that at this point by pressing 0. And now we're going to go to uh, tone frequency, which is item number 66. Now this is where we're going to actually select the CTCSS tone that we want applied to the transmit and receive frequencies. So we're going to press that. And what I'm looking for is 103.5. And that's pretty easy. There it is right there. But you have the full gamut of CTCSS tones in here. So I'll go ahead and press set at this point and save that. So um, at this point, we have set the, um, we've set the receive frequency. The radio has automatically applied. The, uh, the correct offset. Now, let's show you something else real quick. And let's check shift here. Uh, shift is another way of verifying that everything is correct. And as you can see here, the amount of shift that has been applied is 0.6 megahertz, which is exactly what we want. So we verified all those settings. At this point, everything should be good to go. So we're going to exit out by pressing the PTT. And now you'll see some additional stuff that's appeared at the top. We see a minus, we see a T, and we see an SQ. So that's telling us that tone squelch is applied on this, that uh, whatever tone has been put in is going to apply, be applied to the uh, transmit and receive frequencies. Uh, and we see our little minus, so we should be ready to go at this point. <clears throat> so as a reminder, to start the process of committing this to memory, we're going to long press the FW key, when we release that, also as a reminder, you will have five seconds to make a decision as to where you want this to go. Uh, you will see a number that will begin flashing at the top, should be the number four. If that is the, um, the channel slot that you want this to go to, by all means do so. If not, you need to be prepared as soon as you release that FW key to start turning that channel knob to go to the slot where you want this frequency to uh, be assigned to. But in this case, we're, we're perfectly fine. With, uh, and that's actually a repeater beginning to uh, get some traffic. Um, but in this case, uh, everything is cool and we want it on four. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and long press FW now. And I'm going to short press to save it. So now when I switch to memory mode on channel four, there is our repeater. It has appeared. Now the chances of me making a contact from where I'm currently situated on this repeater probably kind of slim and uh, we are having some issues with this repeater in terms of getting any kind of squelch tail back but uh, i'll go ahead and key down anyway kilo cr6 delta alpha yankee testing and you might have noticed when uh, when i uh, pressed the ptt you saw that it was actually on 146.280 that was transmitting so everything's working fine but again my likelihood of being able to make uh, any kind of contact from where i'm currently situated on this repeater sort of slim but I do know these settings work. The next one, I, I should be able to get a little something back. So uh, that's the first one. That's our tone squelch repeater. So let's go ahead and go back to VFO. And let's put, um, let's go ahead and put another repeater in. This time it's going to be a UHF repeater. So we are going to punch in four, four, zero, four, zero, zero. So let me verify that, 440400. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, that is it right there. Now you see uh, ARS has uh, already done its job. I see a plus sign appearing there. So let's go into the set menu and put the parameters in we need for this particular repeater. So FW and zero. Now I'm going I'm to go back a bit here. Uh, let's see, first thing we need to select... May have went back a little too far. How about that? Okay, we're going to need to uh, get our squelch type. So as I... Re well, let's verify that shift real quick on 56. So let's press that. And we see uh, 5 megahertz. And we saw the plus sign. So we know we're plus 5. And that matches uh, the conditions through the repeater. So let's back out of that. And let's go ahead and find our squelch type. And in this case, all we want is tone. We only want to apply the CTCSS tone to the transmit frequency. So we're going to turn that till we get to tone, and it will be applying nothing on the um, 
uh, there be no no decoding required on the radio end. Uh, so let's go ahead and select that. Let me just check that one more time. Yep, that's good. And let's move over here real quick and uh, select our tone frequency, number 66. Again, this is going to be 103.5. So we turn the knob to 103.5 and save that setting. And everything should be fine at this point. So let's go ahead and press the PTT and exit. Okay, so what I see here, I see a plus and I see a T for tone. So everything's looking good so far. We can go ahead and save this at this point. Now this one I want in channel slot 5. I'm going to long press the FW key. You're going to see a 5 flashing there. I'm going to short press the FW key because I want it to go to 5. If I wanted it to go anywhere else, remember, 5 seconds um, to get to that location. So uh, if I wanted it to go to 10 or 15 or whatever, I could start turning that channel knob. Uh, but in this case, 5 is fine with me, so we'll long press CFW. I see 5 flashing. I'm going to short press. Let's go ahead and go to memory. And there we are on channel 5, uh, 440.400. When I key down, you should see it uh, read out uh, 445.400. And uh, I think I got the math right on that one. So let's give this a try. Kilo CR6, Delta Alpha Yankee testing. Okay, got a squelch tail back. Uh, just by way of uh, information, uh, this, yeah, there we go, and it's coming back with its uh, identifier. So we made contact. I'm usually able to hit this quite a bit better from where I'm at. Um, this is a pretty solid repeater, but this table is surrounded with LED lights, and if you know anything about LED lights and radios, they don't work together very well. On a side note, if you're having trouble inside your car, uh, my wife, for instance, had a car that uh, had some kind of LEDs or something in it that I could get no HT to, to work at all inside of that car. Um, and it's the, the same applies here with the sliding. But uh, okay, so that's two repeaters that, uh, that we have programmed in. Let's go ahead and name them. Let's back out to, uh, let's go to number four. And let's uh, assign a name here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, refresh your, your memory on that one. We're going to go back to the set menu again. So we're going to press the FW and then the zero. And we are going to be looking for, if I recall properly, it should be number 40. should be name set. There we are right there, name set. So we're going to press the zero. We see a cursor begin flashing here. So we can go ahead and start putting our... Uh, our name in there, so we're going to, uh, oh, actually we're not going to name this call, we're going to call this something completely different. So let's go ahead and get a T here. So there's T, and then to advance to the next slot, I press the uh, the mode button. So we press mode, and we're looking for a C. And let's go to there, press mode again, let's put an R in. And let's press mode again. And go back to C. I'm going in the wrong direction. This knob always throws me off. I always think it uh, should be turning the other way. Uh, let's advance and let me get a dash here. There's our dash. Move on. And then I'm looking for a number one. Well, well I took the long way around, didn't I? Okay, there we are. All done and dusted. So uh, let's press zero to save that. And let's press PTT to exit. And there's TCRC1, which is Tulare County, uh, not enough room in here for the A, so Tulare County Radio Club, repeater 1. And then uh, later I'll be talking about memory banks. I'll show you how to put these into banks and actually name the, uh, name the bank itself. Um, so let's go to the next one. Let's name that real fast. So again, a reminder, FW and 0. We're already on name set, so we're going to uh, press the 0. And let's kind of do the same thing here. And for those of you that uh, did not see the previous video, I will go ahead and make a mistake here at this point, deliberately. And instead of putting a C, I'll put, uh, wow, I'm in a weird neighborhood here. Okay, let me, there we are. I'll put a C, but instead I'm going to go with a B. I'm going to press the mode key and realize, okay, I wanted a C, got a B. If I need to back up at any point, I just press the band key to go back. And then I can make the uh, correction I need. Press mode to go forward again. Looking for an R. And we are almost done. Let's get a C in here. And look for our dash real quick. 
and then we want a number two. And this will finish it out for us. There's number two. I save, press PTT, and exit. So now I have in the radio three simplex channels, and I have two repeater channels. And as you can see, it takes a lot longer to explain this than it actually takes to do it. You could sit probably in your recliner with, uh, with a list of uh, frequencies uh, that you want to apply to memory channels and go through one of these radios and just tear it up, fill it all in, and uh, be able to do it all from the front panel with very little trouble at all. It's, uh, it's pretty easy, actually. I've had a couple of people already comment that uh, in reading the manual, um, it looks a bit intimidating, but when you see it actually being carried out, it's actually not that darn hard, is it? Um, so, I'll go ahead and wrap it up at this point. In the next video, I'm going to start talking about memory banks. So we're going to talk about, kind of do an intro to memory banks. Uh, we're going to name a couple of banks, and then I will show you how to save um, a memory channel into a memory bank. So with that, I'll uh, bring it to a close. Thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Southwest Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.